rejected, <laughs> as they say. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, alaikum. Peace, uh, people. Hold on. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see what is going on. Rejected. Okay. As they say. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, uh, hi, people. Uh, peace be on you uh, and peace be with you. Um, the sound is fine. Uh, I want to see it uh, in real life. Okay. Uh, we have uh, people participating, few people, but uh, with time, uh, people will come join us, inshallah. And I will uh, share the Zoom link with you guys uh, after a while. And then you are welcome to join us. Today is December 25th, 2021. We have about six days for the year 2021 to end and the new year start. And I would love to uh, start with a, a topic which I have been uh, pondering on uh, just these uh, few days. Let me share with you what is the issue. Oh, okay, hold on. In order to share with you, I need to have this one here. I hope that I can see it uh, uh, through share the screen. Okay, people. Um, here I want to show you today the verse regarding uh, Jesus and uh, also Yahya, John the Baptist. Uh, chapter verse, uh, okay, here it is. Um, um, chapter 19. It is uh, called Mary, and it starts with Kaf Ha Ya Ain Sad, with five letters of Arabic alphabet, combination of letters and numbers. And Kaf is 20, plus H is five, and uh, Ya is 10, Ain is 70, Sad is 90. When you add them up, it is the number, it has uh, a meaning, and I don't want to in, indulge in that issue. It is a different topic. But uh, the frequency of these five letters in this chapter is exactly 798. It is 42 times 19. 19 times 42, it is the mathematical code of the Quran and Old and New Testament. We also know that it is discovered in the new in the Old Testament in 11th century by Rabbi Judah. Most likely, it is also in the New Testament. But this chapter is dedicated to Mary and, and Jesus. Um, today is uh, celebrated uh, by Christians as uh, the birth of Jesus. Correct? Is it uh, is it correct, people? Correct. Okay. And um, we, ha I have been uh, not participating in celebration of neither Jesus' birthday or Muhammad's birthday is being celebrated, though they most likely in wrong days, both, because Muhammad's birthday is not known. They made up several kind of uh, speculation or conjecture. Uh, they picked one day as his birthday. It appears to be the same with the Jesus birthday, but re regardless, it's a celebration of the two uh, great people in history. And uh, they, they were brave monotheists. They stood for freedom, freedom of humans. And um, I, I will come to that issue a little bit later, but here it is, let me show you the verse 15, you may, slow down and browse and read it. This is Quranics.org, uh, Quran uh, Reformist translation, and uh, the Turkish translation is there, though the Turkish translation and Reformist translation, older version. And there is also Muhammad Esas translation, Rashad Khalifa's translation, Shabir Ahmed translation, and Arabic. You can also click on the words, the uh, Arabic words. You can go to the dictionary. If you click on any of them, it takes you to multiple major dictionary 
from Lisan al Arab to Garib al Quran to Lane's dictionary, English dictionary, too. Now, here it is it is about Zechariah, Prophet Zechariah, John the Baptist's uh, father, about the issue with him that he couldn't have kids. And then later, and this is incredible. It is in chapter three, verse 41. I had incredible experience with this uh, similar verse. And then here it is. And uh, for John the Baptist, peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he's resurrected alive. This is for John the Baptist. There are two verses in the Quran, only two prophets or me and messenger of God uh, have been um, their birth, their death, and the day of resurrection is being celebrated and is emphasized. Of course, uh, there are some similarities. Uh, uh, John the Baptist's relation with Jesus and uh, his birth has problem. And the Jesus' birth was unique and different. And also they were, they killed them, though they tried to kill, but uh, they didn't experience the death according to the Quran. Their soul, their conscious, uh, their, their um, person was taken before their body uh, was killed. And, um, and their resurrection. Here it is in uh, 33, let's browse it and it comes to Jesus birth and there is a speculation about all sister of Aaron and sister in the Quran doesn't necessarily immediate sister relationship aunt and uh, from generations is also use the same word for example says Adam is your father it doesn't mean just your immediate father it means your ancestor uh, very simple, uh, um, ignorant reading of the Quran. People think there is contradiction here. No. And they, we come here. Aha, uh -huh. this is about Jesus. He said, I am God's servant. He has given me the book and made me a prophet. He made me bless wherever I was. And he charged me with the contact prayer and uh, solidarity. Not only prayer, the salat means uh, connection, be in connection, be in solidarity with, both with God and also with people, it has both zones, both aspects, and towards uh, and works towards betterment as long as I am alive. And um, continues, it is from the mouth of Jesus, to be dutiful to my mother, and he did not make me a rebellious tyrant. Peace upon me the day I was born. There is parallelism between this verse and verse 15 regarding John the Baptist. Here it is. Peace be upon me the day I was born and the day I die and the day I am resurrected alive. This one also implicitly rejects the Christian and the Sunnis, uh, Shiites uh, fabrication regarding his resurrection on earth. And will his his coming back to earth as a uh, Mahdi or as a Messiah, and this rejects that because it doesn't talk about other days of. If it was, then there will be multiple resurrection and death here, which is not. There are only like every human being, like John the Baptist, like us. He has the day he's born and the day he die, and the day his resurrection. And if his coming back uh, was important today, if there was such a coming back, it should be mentioned, should have been mentioned. Anyway, now I want to go back to people. Nice so to see. And here is uh, my question with you guys. And let's start with this one. And then I would love to hear each of your conversion uh, from religions uh, from Sunni religion, Christian religion, Shiite religion, Hinduism, to monotheism, and also its uh, social and political uh, system, which is called peacemaking, Islam. 
Um, I had, since I accepted the Quran alone in 1st of July, uh, 1986, it is my Laylatul Qadr, it is the night of power. That time Quran was revealed to me. I, I had pieces of the Quran, but I missed the whole message of the Quran, monotheism. I thought I was monotheist, like Christian things, like those who worship Muhammad and uh, his Sahaba and Imams things, like Hindu, even some of the Hindus, they think they are monotheists. But I used to think that I was monotheist, but with down into me, the message of the Quran, the night of 1st of July, 1986, you might have the same experience, or you may not remember, but there is a moment that you, you have aha moment, a paradigm change moment. That time, since then, I have not participated in a celebration of Muhammad's birth or Jesus' birth or any other birth, including my birthday. I am celebrating because it is my own birthday. But I celebrate the people's uh, birthday. It is a culture. But since their birthday celebration is associated with their idolization by their enemies, the enemies of Muhammad, Shiites and Sunnis are the enemies of Muhammad because they fabricate so many lies and horrible teachings to Prophet Muhammad. They idolize, they make God and Muhammad next to each other in mosques and even the Kalime Tawheed, Shahada, means oneness of God. When you declare oneness of God, they add Muhammad's name all the time. They violate many verses of the Quran. And the same with the, those who idolize Jesus, despite the teaching of Jesus in the New Testament says, ask help from God, he is your Lord. Don't call me good, only God is good. And uh, ask people to pray to God alone and the creator. And he doesn't reject the two first commandments about God alone and not have any idols besides God. And uh, but the celebration of Jesus is about worshiping Jesus. Therefore, in order to protest it, I have not participated in those. However, this year I thought about this verse a moment ago. I read uh, chapter uh, 19, verse 33. And I said, well, God is celebrating the birth of Jesus and to uh, Jesus and John the Baptist. And the birth of Jesus is celebrated. Why I am not celebrating this great man who is a brave man who invited people to be free, to only submit to creator of the universe, their creator, not anyone else, not put between themselves and God any uh, holy people pray God directly to God directly and consider all humans are, as brethren, brothers and sisters do not do racism and help people who are in need share God's blessings with other people stand for justice even if it is against you and your tribe, your nation for justice, justice is universal. All humans, regardless of their sex, regardless of their tribes or color, they are all equal. And also establish peace on earth. The name of the religion, the system is peace. It doesn't start with Muhammad. Islam means peacemaking. It starts from the first human being. And therefore, why I am not participating in this celebration, I am letting his enemies who distort the name of these messengers and who promote corruption, ignorance, superstitions, xenophobia, racism, misogyny, barbarism, wars in the name of Muhammad or Jesus. Why I let them to squander, to hijack these great people. Therefore I say, why not? Let's use these days, this convention, birthdays of these two great men. Let's use this to emphasize, to let people know their real message, not let these 
clergymen who are the enemies of monotheism means freedom, who are the enemies of justice, who make basically money out of religion and the corrupt politicians who use them to basically intoxicate masses as opium of masses. Why not stand against them say, yes, we celebrate the birth of Muhammad and Jesus, but they were not like you. They didn't ask for money from people. They were not racist. They were not warmongers. They were not for military industrial uh, complexes. They were not consumerists. They were not capitalists. They were not for sultans and tyrants. Therefore, I'm just asking you, what do you think? Nice to see you people. Okay, uh, nice raise your you hand too. if you want to make it. We have Mrahil. Uh, here it is. I know I made an announcement last moment, and some people just, uh, many people did not even receive this invitation. My purpose was to get to know you, to hear your story. About a few minutes, maybe two, three minutes, tell us, share with us, and we continue these videos to get to know each other. What led you to question the religion of your parents, your environment, your country, which is great deal. It's not a small thing. The biggest, thickest prisons, prison walls are built by religions since childhood. And they are very holy walls, not only thick and not because thickness comes from childhood. And also it is... The indoctrination happens in family, in school, in environment, through many ways, very thick walls, and also says you cannot even think about challenging this wall, open a window in this hall, look around, question this wall. And holy, it is made holy. Holy lies. We are raised with holy lies. Shirk is, simple definition of shirk is, sanctifying lies in the name of God, making up lies and attributing to God. That is the worst things human do because you are not only lying, you are not only glorifying lying, you are sanctifying lying and worse, sometimes you impose on people by force those lies. Okay, and I would like to start, uh, if you don't uh, mind, with Hassan Uzbal uh, from Australia, tell us about yourself, about your change, my brother. Your voice, uh, unmute, please. So the earliest time that I can, I can remember is at four years old, the earliest time where um, here in Australia in the public system, um, I would run away from school daily when, they, when my parents, my parents um, put me into school when I was four years old. They started a year early. Um, I was supposed to start when I was five. But I remember I used to run away from, from school and go back home once they dropped me off. And one day I was at school long enough um, where um, I was there for, 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 um, for morning tea or recess, what they call recess. And um, the teachers had all the children lined up and they made us say the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the food we eat. Thank you, Jesus, for the food we eat. And um, I looked into my hands and I didn't see any food in my hand and no one was giving me any food. So I thought this was actually odd. So I ran away that day back home and my father said, what are you doing home, you son of a donkey? Have you run away again? And I said, yes, I have. And he said, why is that? And I said, well, they're making me thank this man named Jesus <coughs> for food that I haven't received and they're making all the children say this and no one's receiving any food. And that was the first time I heard from my father who Jesus was. And he said, son, we've been blessed with this beautiful country. If they're asking you to thank Jesus, thank Jesus. If they're asking you to thank Muhammad, you thank Muhammad. And at that point I said, who's Muhammad? And he said, son, that these are the messengers of God that were sent down to guide humanity. And um, that was the earliest time that I could remember um, being introduced to the messengers of God. 
And after that, uh, around 11 years old, um, I went to my father willingly. And, um, and the reason why I remember these waypoints is um, there were significant events that happened in those years. For example, in 1985, when I was 11 years old, um, uh, we went to Turkey for the first time, um, uh, visited Turkey for the first time as a family. But in, um, in, in 1985, when I was 11 years old, I went to my father willingly and I said, Dad, um, I know when you start the car and everything, you say a prayer. And every time you do something, you say a prayer. Can you teach me that prayer? And um, I asked him, what is that prayer? And he said, um, he, he taught me, Bismillah rahman rahim So at 11 years old, I went willingly to my father, whose name was Suleiman. And um, hold on, Hamdi, you are smoking. Please don't smoke. Don't be a bad example for kids. They will be watching. You just mess up our video. <laughs> oh, sorry, my, my talk, I didn't know I was being recorded. Yeah, let me disclaimer. And uh, this one, orange juice, a little bit, no sugar added, and I <laughs> diluted with a lot of water. Though still, my wife will have issue with me because sugar. We are addicted with sugar. But uh, don't drink also juice, so much juice without dilution. This is the juice is this much. Okay. Sorry, guys. This, sorry, Hassan, for the service. Avoid sugar and avoid cigarettes and alcoholic beverages. Avoid gambling. Avoid bad words. Okay. And avoid girls and boys before, after, uh, before college, finishing college. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, Hassan, problem. you have one minute to finish because we'll come back. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah, so, um, so I learned Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And at the age of 19, um, I started my mechanical apprenticeship. And um, I was visiting my cousin, whose name was Metin, whose name is Metin, sorry. And um, there he had an Afghanistani friend, and his Afghanistani friend presented him with a Quran, what they call here in Australia the three in one. And um, uh, when, when they were talking about it and they were debating about it, um, I picked up the book and I pretty much opened up the first page, the cover, I read the Quran, uh, the first cover, and then I opened up and I read the introduction. And in the introduction, it explained that this Quran was three in one. It had the Quran in it, it had Sunnah in it, and it had Hadith in it, all mixed into the one. And while they were discussing and everything that this was the Quran, I stopped them and I stopped them short and I said, did you guys know that this is what they call a three-in-one Quran? And on the back of that, they said, no, no, this is the Quran. And they were debating me for it actually took my cousin Metin three years to come back to me and say, I actually understand what you said in relation to the Quran being a three-in-one. So I found, it, I found it very odd that there was three people sitting in that room and one could actually read or see what was written in the introduction and two others were blind to it. So... On the back of that, I'll close my, my story. Mashallah. Thank you very much for telling us your story. And we'll come back to you. We'll get to know you more. I think through every Saturday, uh, universal time at 19 p.m., uh, you check your time according to universal time, Greenwich time. And we will be meeting every Saturday regularly with peacemakers around the world, rational monotheists around the world, get to know each other, and then maybe do projects together and have uh, solidarity with each other, inshallah. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me remove you from PIN. And uh, Selim, where are you? Uh, Selim, uh, please, uh, everyone here, Next to your name, write uh, your comma, space. Don't forget space after comma and dots. Some people squeeze them, kind of very pressurize them, hurt the comma. Please respect breathing space of comma and dots. Okay? <laughs> I am very <laughs> sensitive about this. Some people just squeeze them. Some people even before them give space and they are lost between two words. They don't know which one they belong. And therefore, after the words, you put comma, no space, after the space, put the name of the city with capital letters 
and then comma, the name, the abbreviation for your country or abbreviation or the name. Celine, where are you from? I am from Colorado in the United States. Okay, I am right in Colorado, Celine, hey, Colorado, uh, USA. And your name changed to Celine, Colorado, USA. Nice to see you. Tell us about yourself, about your story, Within about three minutes, we'll switch around. We'll come back. What do you want? Like just the beginning, just like how I came into Islam or how I came to monotheism? Because I would condense yes, it. Yes, uh, you are right. You have two stories. Perhaps you came to Sunni Islam first, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not Islam. Sunni shirk associating partners to God, unfortunately. And then from them, you came to Islam, peacemaking and monotheism, correct? Yeah. And uh, okay, wow, you have very complicated things because <laughs> you had two courageous steps. I had only one courageous step from my parents' religion to monotheism. Of course, they all declared me apostate. My life was at risk stuff. And I don't know about your situation, but intellectually the same courage incredible you could you 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 were christian before correct yes which one catholic or protestant no i was um a baptist okay you were baptist you became sunni and then mm -hmm. afterwards you got the message of the quran yes okay go ahead whichever you okay. want just tell us maybe more than three minutes because you have two <laughs> two walls you broke two incredible thick walls. You smash them. Mashallah. Wow. Great. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. So just like Hassan, when I was about four, I found this book in my grandmother's house and it was a picture of Jesus and he was on the cross and he was bleeding and he had the crown of thorns. And it scared me because it was very graphic for a four-year-old. I still remember it. And I go to my grandmother, I'm like, what is this? And she was like, oh, that's that's God. And I'm like, mm -mm. Like I knew in my heart, like this can't be, this is scary. Like this cannot be God. So then um, it's interesting, like Allah brought Muslims into my life as a kid. My brothers, there were a lot of like Saudi kids that um, they were like college kids. And there was a bunch of them that came to school out here actually. And my, and they were living in the same apartment complex as us. And my brother, they became friends because they were all teenagers at the time, like 18, 19 years old. These guys have Lamborghinis. And my brother's like, you know, I have these really cool Saudi friends. And um, I would watch them pray. They would come over and I would watch them pray. And I just like, you know, look around the corner at these guys praying. And I'm like, wow, when I'm older, I'm going to be a Muslim. Like I'm going to, I don't know what, and they would sometimes tell me things. They'd be like, you know, Allah has 99 names. They would teach me about Allah, but I still, it just didn't click yet. And then, um, just I'll fast forward. So just for sake of time, um, I, you know, I stayed in the Christian church. I went to church like twice a week. I was into it. It was really Were into you God, but were you singing any songs? Hallelujah. I was singing. I yes. can tell. <laughs> you should sing for us too, but no. not the polytheistic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, every time we were in church, they would say, in the name of Jesus. And I'd be like, no, in the name of God. Like, I just didn't want to say in the name of Jesus. Like, at the end of our prayer, I just, like, in the name of God. And I didn't even know I'm saying Bismillah pretty much, you know, just in English. <laughs> um so I, my brother would, he was always, he, the Muslim brothers got to him first. They, the, he had an understanding of Islam. So he would always tell me, you need a Quran, you need a Quran. And I'm like, okay, give me one. So I was pregnant. I was actually pregnant with my first son. He was like, you should read the Quran to the baby. And so I started to read it, but it was in gibberish. It was this exact translation. It was this book. And I'm reading and it's just, even though it's English and Arabic, it's like the English is gibberish. I could not understand it. <laughs> and then I just was like, you know what? I'm going to close this book. I'm going to close it up. 
and I'm not going to, you know, I respect it, but it's just, I don't, I don't get it. And then a year later, I started to ask like, God, why am I here? What do you want from me? And something in my heart said, go back and get the book. So I go back on my shelf. I pick up the Quran. And when I pick it up, I read Al-Fatiha. I read the first two or three pages of Bakra. And I'm like, I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. And, th- and, every- and my brother was like, you can't just say you're Muslim. You have to go take your Shahada. I'm like, I don't know what that is. All I know <laughs> is I'm Muslim. I believe in Allah. This is the truth. And so I was persecuted by my family. They pretty much kicked me out. I had a new baby because at the time my baby was about a year and my grandmother had just passed. And so I went home. It was like my grandmother died and it was like around the exact same time I became Muslim. So I go home back home to Wisconsin for her funeral. And when I'm there, there, I have other cousins who have embraced Islam as well. And they start telling, they, um, my family, although some of them were persecuting me, I had other family members that said, grandma told us to leave them alone. We can't tell them that what they're doing is wrong. What they're doing is right. So I had like some of my family were like, we this Muslim stuff. And then some of them are like, grandma told us to leave them alone. So um, as I'm learning, I'm only Quran only. As I become, in, as I come into Islam, I'm like, this is all I need. But it's being pushed on me from outside. You need hadith books. I'm like, I don't know what this is. It was so foreign to me to have these extra books. And I was like, I don't need these. And I was getting, I came came into Islam the same time as my ex-husband. He's like, no, we need these books. We have to have these books. So I've kind of adopted them unwillingly. I didn't like it. I taught in an Islamic school for... Over a decade, I'm teaching kids hadith. I'm teaching this, you know. I come, I, some of them I thought were ridiculous. Some of them I'm like, oh, this is cool. But there was always something in my heart that just did not stick well. And so then. For example, friend, hadith in Bukhari, if you read, says, It is uh, repeated in Fem Bukhari, it says, women are deficient of mind yeah. and religion and many mm-hmm. like that. This is not the worst. And then, of course, as a woman, how do you feel? <laughs> God, oh, yeah. you we're the ones going to hell. We're going to go to hell. We're going to be the yeah, majority, majority of the hell, hell is you. Though the prisons are filled with men, the dictators, the mass murderers, the worst uh, thieves in the world, the biggest... Uh, uh, tyrants, they are men, but most of the hell is <laughs> with the woman. Is Pharaoh the women. was men, correct? Uh, Karun was men, Haman was men. Throughout history, you see the worst people are from us, but in Hadith, it is the women. Even in St. Paul, St. Paul says, woman, shut up. You were the one who duped us <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> because of you, we became bad. Shut up. <laughs> Look at the audacity of us, the men, unfortunately. Yes, sister, can you finish in one minute? Because we I want to finish. go, but, but we will. I love your story. Inshallah, in the future, people will get to know you more. We will, inshallah, create a wonderful community. We have no hostility towards Christians, towards Sunni, towards Shiites. No one. We consider them our brothers and sisters. But unfortunately, the religion they are following is dividing humanity and creating a lot of trouble throughout history. Therefore, we want to unify. We all have one God creator. We are all brothers and sisters. We want to create a peaceful, just world. Correct? Correct. Yes, I can finish in one minute. So my friend, he messaged me and he said, look at this verse. And um, he sent me the verse. Ah, He sent, well, one of them was 45.6. We looked at 45.6. These are the ayat of Allah, which we recite to you in truth. Then in what hadith after Allah and his ayat will they believe? And we knew, we were like, whoa, (laughs) we don't have to follow all of this stuff anymore. It was like a chain had been broken. And 
I've been monotheistic ever since. Allah just kept guiding me to more ayat. Allah opened my heart up and let me know that he's going to guide me through the book. I don't need the shit. I don't need the imam. I don't need Sahih Bukhari. I just need Allah. So that's my story. It's so much deeper. I would love to share the whole thing, you know, more in depth one day. But uh, thank you, brother Edip, Edip for Mashallah. letting me come. Mashallah. So nice meeting you, Celine. First time I meet you. And uh, I would love to hear in depth and we get to know each other. Now we have um, other people uh, joined us. Uh, uh, let me recognize them uh, and then uh, give uh, to one of them two things. We have Hassan Uzbal talked. Gülnar Çelik. Gülnar, after your name, let me write down to help everyone. After Gülnar, do you give me permission to write your the name of your city? New Jersey, USA, even I did it before you. Fast. You see, comma space, New Jersey, USA. And Hassan Uzbal is from Sydney, Australia. We have Mirahil, New Jersey, USA. Mirahil is, um, if you watched uh, uh, Running Like Zebras, there is an episode at Ground Zero. I am challenging Americans many years ago in the Ground Zero. The, it was still built. And I got bunch of hundred dollars in my pocket and put the Quran translation on the floor and also some soda and some potato chips next to it. And then I challenge Americans, come discuss with me. Uh, of course, uh, I don't want to say. Anyway, I offer them either hundred dollars or the free Quran uh, translation, Quran reformist translation. Or if they are scared to read this one, potato chips and soda, but three minutes discussion, and um, they would uh, pick two people in the crowd as judge, three minutes discussion about American foreign policy and on any related topic. Whether they win or not, because three minutes in public they discuss with me, they would get $100. But if they lose, if they the two people decide they lost, then they will get either the Quran or potato chips. Anyway, there, Mirahil was with me. And he was a brave man because it was risky. In fact, the cameraman was, uh, when he understood about what I'm going to do, because we did a little um, sample of a top on Manhattan, and he knew that it would be dangerous. I could be attacked. Even someone could kill me. He didn't want to be going in the middle of the chaotic situation. Therefore, he had remote. He put the remote microphone here. He had telescope. He put telescope on his camera. He was professional. We had a professional team. And from far away, he was recording. And Mirahil was a brave guy next to me. Nice to meet you, Mirahil. And Osman Yashar from New York and Hamdi Bazian from California. And uh, we will we'll get to know each other. Hamid Marzai from Oklahoma, he came from Pakistan, Afghanistan. He is, no, Afghanistan, correct? He's impressive. Right now he has his own business, very young age. He's very great optimist, incredible. He's basically whole family. He's supporting his own family in a very young age. And Nuri we have from Ontario, Canada. Nice to see you, Nuri. Lilia K, I don't know, but uh, I wish you write uh, the name of she, the city she, or uh, country. She, she was also in our documentary uh, 10 years ago. Oh, really, Lilia? Yeah. Oh, nice to see you, Lilia. I'm so sorry. I, I, I apologize for not remembering. Lilia, when you... Everyone who will be participating in this uh, periodical Saturday meeting, universal time, 19 p.m. Please, when you have your phone instead of vertical, put your phone sideways because you are right now using half of the screen. It looks ugly aesthetically. Yeah, yeah, you did it a moment ago. If you change the look orientation of the phone sideways, yes, here is you look better. Okay, uh, Gunnar, you are right now co-host. I want you to go and pick and choose 
and um, just use your deference. Maybe one man, one woman. Okay. You want me to choose to who is going to talk? Yeah, if you want, you can uh, give yourself the uh, first, or give someone else, and then you join us. Sure. Okay. I see. I see Selin from Colorado. Yes, he talked. She talked. Okay, so I just joined, so I don't know who uh, who spoke okay. already. Yeah, you are not using a computer like I do. I see everyone. Yeah. Okay, you have difficulty to follow. Uh, yeah. What about, uh, let's listen to Mrahil from New Jersey. Salam and then later, Lilia and Nuri and uh, Hamdi, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. How are you? Um, some familiar faces, uh, Gulnar, nice to see you again. Hope your daughter and husband are doing well. Lilia, um, we Thank talk you. every day. So, um, so you know, I'm, I'm going to try to sum up the last 20, 30 years. I, I think as young kids, especially growing up um, first generation in, in the U.S., right, um, our parents who came for, from countries like Pakistan or Bangladesh, they want to put us in some sort of an Islamic school, right? Um, so early on, at least when I was from uh, six to eight, right? Um, I got put in a school where the objective was you memorize the Quran, you will read the Hadith. Um, from a very early age, I started questioning these things. And this is in upstate New York, uh, Buffalo, right? I'm not going to mention the school but you guys should be familiar. But the thing is, they never really teach you the understanding or logic behind what you're reading, right? So for years, it bothered me. Um, you know, like when I would go to Salat, it, it, it didn't make sense. I was gibbering the Arabic, right? But it didn't make sense to me where I had to go on my own and learn the actual language to make sure that, hey, um, it makes much more sense, just like a math, like math. If you know the formula, you know how to apply it instead of just memorizing something and just giving the answer, right? I had that in me from a very young age. Um, and then my special day was uh, May 10, 2009. Um, that's when I decided to leave the Sunni religion, the religion of my parents. And Idip, if you recall, you are the first person that I spoke to because I started Googling stuff. I'm like, okay, let me, let me read. Let me see these translations that I have in my house. They don't make sense because in parentheses, they have Muhammad's name where it's not even supposed to be Muhammad, right? Um, what do I do? Um, and talking to you, I actually met a lot of different people, right? Um, verified your translation. It, the Arabic in itself, not, nothing can do justice. But if you are to read the reformist translation, I think that is closest to the actual Arabic. That's just my opinion. Um, and everyone should go ahead and try to verify for themselves. That's what 1736 tells you, right? Don't believe in something un unless you verify the information for yourself. Um, so I, I, you know, I promise God that no matter what, I'll always try to do my best to be the best person to myself for my fellow human beings to help people out. And that's what we should continuously do to uh, believe in God alone. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, nice to see you again. After many years, you are married right now. You have kids. Yes. Mashallah. Um, Osman Yashar is here. Uh, Osman disappeared. Uh, Osman Yashar is a professor uh, at uh, University of New York, but uh, he was here. He disappeared. Okay. Um, he will come back, uh, inshallah. And um, okay, let's go to Lilia. Lilia, nice meeting you. Hi, guys. Hi, Deep. Um, so I'm originally from Kazakhstan and I immigrated five years ago to New York City. And um, well, sh um, long story short, I was raised in a post-communist and post-atheistic country, which uh, was like in the 90s, a country was 
going back to uh, original traditions of Kazakh people and of course the religion. So um, my family wasn't religious at all. They were uh, ordinary Soviet people. And I was always, since I was a kid, I was always questioning um, about the, I had like questions about how, you know, the world is, um, who is running the world. And I don't know how it's, how it's, you know, who is God and who should I follow? So I read, uh, by the time I, when I was a kid, I read uh, Bible, Torah, and then, um, everybody around was like returning to traditions and to religion. So the only uh, option was to go back to Islam. So uh, I started learning Sunni Islam because there wasn't any other options. So I became very, very dedicated Sunni, um, Sunni Muslim. And I was in a, in a uh, Salafi way, in a very Arabic traditions way which is, uh, did make sense, but uh, I was against my family. I um, used to call them kafirs and all these bad names. And then um, I used to learn Arabic, which is, thank God, helped me to later on to read Quran in original. And then uh, four years later uh, of practicing Sunni Islam, I was covered. I was wearing hijab. I was praying five times. I was going to all these um, Tajweed classes, to mosque and all that. And then um, once I abandoned all my friends and my family, then four years later, I started questioning a lot of things that didn't make sense. And then... Um, through through like my Sunni friends, I met a guy who gave me um, a Quran manifest in Russian. And then he said, if you read this book, we then can have a conversation so we can debate. I was like, no, you cannot debate without the imams and all those uh, uh, Islamic teachers and um, scientists and whatever. And then he said, no, you have your own brain, you have your own will, so we can, we can discuss. And then when I started learning the book, I, I couldn't find any um, facts so I can debate with him because all the facts were like making sense. And I started crying. I was, it's like the whole world was collapsing around me. And then I started just like Marahil, I just started um, Googling, what should I do? Where should I go? Because this religion doesn't make sense. These people are not my people anymore. And then I found Asselbeck uh, back in the days. And then his, uh, his friends and all those uh, beautiful, amazing people. And then I contact them. I wrote email and then he said, let's meet up. We can support you. We can protect you. We can guide you. We can help you with anything you want. And then we met um, and they gave me a lot of books and they gave me actually the translation of yours, uh, Edip. And um, yeah, so then since that, um, um, you know, I'm on this path uh, of Quran and all the holy books not only Quran, but all the holy books. And yeah. Um, and then I, I moved to, to New York City and all our guys, uh, Asilbek and all those guys, they moved to Europe, to Latvia. So yeah, but we're still in touch. We're still uh, brothers and sisters. So yeah. Wow, Thank you Lilia. for having me. <laughs> nice meeting you again. How many years it has been? It was 2011, I think. It was 2011, yes. Oh my God, look at this, 10 years later. Mashallah, nice seeing you here. Thank and, you. And uh, let's keep in touch, inshallah. I'm so um, sentimental about that Asilbek. Uh, I miss him, and he was such a beautiful man. Uh, mashallah. Uh, Osman, uh, a moment ago, we talked about you, you left. Uh, Julnar left. Uh, I wish that uh, she introduced herself uh, in New Jersey. Very good friend of mine. Um, and uh, Osman, uh, welcome. Osman Yashar, please uh, 
tell about yourself and then if you have a story tell us about your story who are you by the way yeah thank you i i uh, had to leave to go to the other room but i i did hear you mentioning my name <laughs> so who am i well i don't have a specific timeline or date uh for my evolution so i mean i was born to a a uh, very good family, and I was I was taught uh, how to read Quran at age uh, uh, six. Uh, it contributed to I think to my intelligence as far as seeing the combinations of the letters and the words, and, and even though I didn't understand it, my grandfather was a mufti, and he uh, I was told I never saw him. He would study until three a.m., four a.m. He was he was into astronomy. So his curiosity, his books uh, passed on to me the, uh, you know, a curiosity for science and physics. Okay. So I studied physics as a result of that, I think. Uh, you know, I was searching for, for the meaning of life and, and you know, uh, the creator and who lived behind those mountains that I couldn't climb to. <laughs> okay. So, but, uh, you know, after 30 years or some studying of physics, uh, uh, I always believed in, in a creator and I never subscribed to any club or anything that I was not a chair of. <laughs> so I was a man, you know, with my own, uh, just like maybe Edip. Uh, then uh, my studies led me into, you know, brain sciences, okay, how people think and learn. I think in, in there, I found answers to my, some of my physics questions. You know, I saw similarities between how we think and how the universe and the matter works. It all led me to see that, uh, you know, uh, creator has, has probably only one message to give to, to us, which is that everything changes. You know, there is an evolution. Either things come together or they separate. This, this two-way evolution, goes on for years and if so then you know that couldn't be you you know no one can be special in, in my view you know and then i realized even prophets made mistakes uh, during their lifetime so you know then i said wait a minute you know how could a prophet marry you know a nine-year-old ten-year-old or 12-year-old you know uh girl so I came to a realization, yes, you know, uh, God in creation, you know, everything is beyond us. You know, we cannot, uh, no one is sacred. Uh, not Jesus, not Muhammad, you know, they're all humans. When I saw, this, saw uh, God's name, Allah's name and Muhammad's name in, in mosques, right? And Mihrab, I knew that a shirk was going on. Okay. Uh, so I saw... Besides many things that I saw in my community, uh, you know, I saw those things and I realized, you know, that there was something wrong going on. Uh, you know, my, my evolution continues. <laughs> you know, I don't know three years from now where I will be because I keep thinking, always trying to get answers to, to some things. Uh, my view on, on uh, Jesus has changed lately. I used to just, uh, you know, I was stunned that they would call him God and son of God. I think these days I understand why he was saying that. Uh, I don't think he was saying he was son of a God or he was God, but he may, he may have said that we are all co-creators, that we contribute to, to our own fate. And, and then the society just, you know, mistook that as, as saying that he was claiming to be a God. So I respect him. I love him as much as I love other prophets. And, and uh, you know, uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks, I've been listening to Quran. Uh, I think it gives me peace, you know, in the morning and at night. And I am so happy that I, uh, I've come to know Adib. You know, I, I respect him. I love him dearly. I think uh, he, you know, I subscribe to many things that, that he he, you know, he's telling you, uh, and I'm happy to be here. I'm just uh, 
amazed about your story. Mashallah. What are you teaching? Uh, I always forget what you were teaching. Well, in these days, I just teach uh, teachers about uh, how to use simulations to, you know, to teach science and mathematics. Uh, of course, yeah. I, I, I would like to also interview you on the topic uh, of your research. I have been thinking about, and this is beautiful occasion. I see you here. Uh, I would like to have a short comment about uh, the son of God uh, expression in the Bible. You yeah. know, I have written 19 questions for Christians because of that I studied in Hebrew language in Old Testament and uh, it is used uh, children of God. It means honest people, righteous people for righteous people. It is used. It, it, it doesn't denote imply divinity at all. It is right. about being children of God means being righteous, be a monotheist a person with good deeds. Therefore, when they accuse Jesus not to be the Messiah, a monotheist who is uh, criticizing the corruption and oppression in the time, when they called him liar, he says, no, I am son of God. I am not lying. The, the same expression. Therefore, the same Jesus tell people, be children of God. Mean, mm -hmm. In that language means be honest, be yeah. righteous, be good people. And uh, but with time, they added uh, the only begotten in John, one of the verses, the only begotten son of God. Through that, they create a unique sonness of God. But uh, in 1967, the last uh, Bible uh, translation, uh, King James translation, if you look at it before 1967, there is a footnote under that verse. It says in some manuscripts, the expression, the only begotten doesn't exist. Aha, that's the one you inserted. There are a few verses in the Bible they exploit, they distort. And here it is from your own admission. It is very clear. You said it and I have it here. That means in some manuscripts, it doesn't exist. How curious, how ironic. Your Trinity doesn't exist in the whole Old Testament, New Testament. They all talk about God. Somehow they forgot about Trinity, the basis of your religion. And then here in the Bible, you pick and choose few verses and the, that those very verses are questionable by yourself. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Osman. Mm. And uh, would, I would like to go to um, Nuri. Uh, by the way, Celine, I, I would have a question for you. She has uh, some beautiful picture of the world kind of behind. It, it looked good. Sometimes it, it doesn't work. People are mixed with the background. You see there is a dance between background and the face of the person is morphing and stuff. It was pretty good. She looked like an astronaut. It's just one of the <laughs> backgrounds um, that uh, Zoom provides. Yes. It's, okay, it's, Nuri, tell us about yourself, introduce yourself a little bit, and then about you, if you experience like we experience a religious transformation, paradigm change, would love to hear your story. Yes, I have a lot to say, but I'm, I am going to keep it short, and I just want to um, extend my gratitude to Mrahil. I don't know if I said that correctly, but he invited me to this group, and um, I'm glad to be speaking to people who are like-minded um, as we are and um, have found the truth. Um, my, I was, um, my nationality is India, but I was born and raised in Ontario, Canada. Um, and same type of traditional values just didn't seem logical. And, you know, we get to see both sides of the world. So we do question quite a bit being in a, another country and, and have that ability to, to see what's, what's, you know, what is right and what is traditions and, and how it's hard to fit traditions into another traditional country. But my, um, my journey began because I, uh, just renounced my community. Like I just didn't like who they were. I didn't like how they made me feel. I would try to go to the mosque. I would try to go for eat pairs. And I just didn't like how judgmental people were. And um, it's just the type of people that were in my community. I just uh, just didn't like it. So I, I completely stopped attending. But um, ever since I was a child, I always had a relationship with God. But I didn't know um, what that was or what that meant. And 
God has always given me signs to believe and in dreams and reality. Like it's, it's really hard. It's really uh, mind blowing to talk about some experiences, but they were real. They were real to me and whether people want to poke holes at it, that's fine. But um, it's my belief and it's personal to me. Um, so I began this journey to, cause I'm a thinker as well. Um, and it should have gone to philosophy as um, an undergrad, but of course Indian parents don't really believe that's a job. Um, so I chose economics, um, and, but in economics, there's a lot of social behaviors. I really enjoyed learning about how people behave with money and how they're incentivized, incentivized and, and how people make decisions based on what's at hand. Um, so that type of thinking really helped me um, get to this point. And this point that I came to was really just about, um, from a feminist point of view, to say that why in history do we not have any women philosophers who are named? Um, and I began to try to find books on women philosophers and I found one book and it was $700 from this lady. And it's, it's taught in universities and textbooks. $700? And I, yeah, and I just couldn't they afford... They made it just for people not to read the book. <laughs> well, in, exactly, right? So this is what's happening is that because there's such a small group of people who are actually interested in this, that in order for her to make sense of it, that she has to... I mean, maybe it's a publishing company too, or whoever published her work. Um, but I have it in one of my eBooks um, as a title, save title, but I still haven't purchased it. Um, I'm not there yet, so... Having said that, um, then I came across this guy who did a Google talk and he's a German professor and he, yeah, he's actually done my life's work for me. So I started listening to his podcast and he, he goes into before time, before the time of Christ, before the time of Moses and talks about Aristotle and how people viewed women. And, and he had this thought about how, um, you know, we have to see the, the human bodies as different than the soul. And I think when uh, philosophers talked about women, they quite often would say that a woman is like a plant. It provides life and it nourishes people. Like that's the way people viewed women. And that was their only role as a woman, be, woman body. But of course, um, I mean, this whole um, feminist thing, like this women's voices being silenced, it's not an Islam phenomena. It's, it's truly something that's happened during that time. And, and just, um, I mean, I'm not really sure I'm still searching for that answer, um, but there is, but there is scriptures and there is information about strong women in history around that time. So I'm still searching through that. And that's, and that's kind of where it just snowballed. It just kept snowballing. And, and then here I was somebody like something just in, I had, I went to BC for a week to visit my sister and it was a terrible trip. It just brought back so much traumatic memories and of like being childhood and having such a crazy family um, that it was really sad. I was really sad. And something in me just said, just read the Quran, just read the Quran, just read the Quran. So finally I just went onto my phone went to Quran.com and started reading and everything just started making so much sense. And I, I was just kind of upset that I hadn't found it before because I, I, I think I tried a few times, but just like um, Celine, like the, the translations are so poor. It's, it's difficult to read it. And how do you make sense of thou shalt when that's not a language anymore? And, um, and it doesn't, uh, and, and it's just broken English. And, and it's just, again, I put it down by that time, but now that the translations are available and there's still some fault in the translations as well that I've noticed, but um, there is some good, good, good translation work done um, that has brought me to the point to say that everything we know is about the Hadith is, is I would say 80% false. Um, and, and like the philosopher who I'm following has, there's a team called the Orientals and they're actually from Russia, I believe. They have gone and done the work of finding original scriptures, scriptures and ensuring that they're peer reviewed and making sure the translation is done correctly. And um, so there are, there are um, hadiths by Aisha that they've confirmed to be true, um, but there's some that, that, that are just not true. So, I mean, 
the, the sad thing is that the Muslim, Muslim world likes to poke holes at the Christian Bible to say that, oh, the translation has been changed over time. And how can you rely on the Bible when the translations change so much? But that is so true of the Hadith as well. So how can you be such a hypocrite to say that you believe the Hadith to be true when it's also hasn't retained its, you haven't preserved it either. So that's my two, two minutes of uh, my story. Um, thank you for having me. It is nice meeting you. I just gave my phone number here to you guys. It is also WhatsApp number. I want to add you also to the group, Nuri, if you want to, uh, to share these links. I have a group at WhatsApp. I share the links of these kind of meetings. And uh, please, uh, at WhatsApp, send me a message in your name and uh, Ontario, Canada, so that I will add you and hope. Nice meeting you. Uh, and uh, good luck. Uh, it is uh, life is a struggle and question. And uh, among philosophers, of course, uh, uh, most of the philosophers were men. Most of the scientists were men. Most of the dictators were men. Most of the murderers were men, correct? And therefore it was man world. Uh, the reason is because uh, muscle power aggression was the one dominating the world. But since uh, the industrial revolution, and especially information revolution, right now it is mental. And it is uh, therefore now it is equal level. Women muscle, men's muscle is not that relevant as used to be. Therefore you are welcome on the board, Nuri <laughs> and Lilia and Celine of the world, beautiful. We men need women to compensate our deficiency, to say shut up when we talk so much. And therefore, I really appreciate it. In the past, there were few, like Hypatia is one of my heroes. She was a mathematician and philosopher in about 300 uh, AC after uh, Jesus. And uh, she was unfortunately, she rejected Trinity based on mathematics, on logic. He says, she said, doesn't make sense. How can one plus one plus one equals one and plus equals one and equals one? One plus one plus one equals one. If Jesus in Nicene Conference, they claim Jesus, God, and uh, Holy Spirit, they are equal, but they are also separate. They add to one. Therefore, yeah. it didn't make sense. Um, and she was Surabhadra. killed horribly. She was horribly killed. Well, and and this is the this is the problem with with some people is that it's not a safe world to be so forward. And um, I think it's important to keep our um, privacy really tight because, especially for women, um, I don't I'm not, I don't feel safe going out in public and speaking my okay. mind. Um, the other thing too is that um, the only comment I have to make is that like even in North America, like women are still fighting for equal pay. So we're like where we are in Islam and where we need to get women to, like it's not going to happen in our lifetime because we have like the Christian countries like North America can't even give women equal pay. How do we expect Muslim countries to even follow suit? Um, I think there is a, a major uh, momentum in reformation. It will happen much faster than you expect because they are Inshallah, the so-called so. <laughs> so Muslim world in crisis, economic, social, political, psychological crisis. Right now, there is a great movement leaving religion, becoming atheists, theists, and monotheists. In Turkey, in Iran, Saudi, everywhere that is huge, it is accelerating because of the proliferation of internet and access to knowledge and information. And it will be much faster than you think. And there are certain thresholds. It goes like this, and then it reaches a social point, a point, boom, you will see major uh, reformation will happen, inshallah, God will. And uh, I would like to finish this one at 1.30. Right now, my time, Arizona time, is 1.10. In 20 minutes, I want to finish up, not more than one and a half hour. And also, I for those who will be listening to this one, I once in a while, I post the link to this Zoom in the live chat. It is risky. Sometimes very bad people come, bad people or corrupted people come try to sabotage it. Few times happened. 
but usually, hopefully, it's good. And uh, I would love to, uh, you are always welcome because we will discuss in topics, meanwhile, getting to know each other each uh, Saturday. We need to also improve these things to include every person who wants freedom, justice, and peace on this world, regardless of their monotheism, whatever they are. It is between us and God, between me and God. But as a peacemaker, we need to also transcend the religious and national borders, create a united peacemakers. Because United Nations, unfortunately, they are united corrupt governments. Therefore, they promote wars, the warmongering, corruption, and they are in cahoots with big corporations. And we people, we need to transcend that one, create a balancing power of people because there are many people around the world, even in the worst countries, share the same expression and ideals like you, you are. Therefore, we need to open up beyond uh, faith. Faith is very important to me, is the most important thing between me and God, my trust in God, one God, that this life is not only this, there is eternal life, there is justice. It's the most important thing. However, for us living together, a person may not care about his hereafter, about God, but a person wants to be free, to live in a just world, and people who care about each other, and also in a world that will not be spending money and energy for bloody uh, military industrial complexes to kill each other. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And uh, here we have uh, in order, I'm going to Hamdi Bazian, nice to meet you, and then Hamid, and we have three more people, one from Singapore, WIB, and uh, you are welcome, but we don't see your face. <laughs> if you raise the, change the uh, angle of the, uh, your uh, camera. Hassan we have, and we have uh, Mumin from Istanbul. We have from Turkey, two people. Hamdi, you are welcome from California. Salam Salam uh, I need to hear all your stories. Nice to meet you all. Um, I want to apologize first. I didn't know this was going to go on YouTube. And, and this is why I, I thought, you know, I take a puff of my uh, puff bar. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep my story short. It's not as detailed as everybody else's um, just because it didn't really have to do uh, much with questioning. It was more of accepting what came to me. Um, I, 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 I always had, you know, a relationship with God. Um, I've always, you know, loved God. I, I would, you know, cry if I miss a prayer. And, um, but I never really was attached to my uh, religion itself. Like I, I didn't really want to dig in deeper. I um, didn't really care about Hadith much. I, all I knew is I, I just needed to pray and I needed to serve my Lord. And, and that, that was that. Um, I, I moved, I, I'm born in Palestine uh, with a Kurdish last name and my grandma had a Jewish last name. So I always felt different than, you know, I didn't really have too much of an attachment to, you know, the whole Arabized superiority of the religion. Um, what did you say? You have Jewish and Kurdish in your... Yeah, my last name is Kurdish. So it's uh, Bazian. Uh, it's not Arabic. Um, my, my, la my grandma's last name is Yaish. So it's uh, okay, Jewish. Good. I like it. Your mixture beautiful. Yeah, nice <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, um, yeah, I just felt different than the Arabs around me. Um, I, I really didn't get attached to my culture either. Um, I, I really wasn't into it much uh, besides the food, of course, and my grandma's cooking. I moved to America and um, uh, I moved to America and, you know, lost touch with, uh, with, with, uh, with my God, with my Lord, um, just because, you know, I'm an observant person and I was always picking up on, you know, well, hey, well, what's going on with other people? And, you know, with the mixing pot, you get indulged in the American, you know, way of living where you care about, you know, this and that. And, and even though I didn't really care much, I just thought, hey, you know, I, I probably should join the club and be cool. Um, after college, 
uh, I met this this uh, this guy who was also born Sunni, but he had converted to Shiism, and um, he he became my best friend, my right hand man, basically, or I'm his right hand man. However, you guys want to look at it, Batman and Robin, and um, he was telling me about Shiism, and um, and uh, and I think like the whole you know uh, attachment to you know that knowledge goes through family, and you know family was. The way to preserve knowledge just made more sense to me than the Sahaba transmitting the knowledge. And I just uh, I just thought, hey, you know what? Uh, this just sounds more right. I remember that Ramadan, I, was, I, I, I would just stay up every night, every night and just ask God, hey, if this is for me, let me accept it. If it's not, at least let me find the truth. And um, yeah, um, I, I, I became Shia. I didn't really... Um, also give advice to Shiism. I remember I would go to like Layla al Qadr and you know they would have the books on their heads and they would say yeah Ali all the time and I, I just knew like this just not it just does not seem right. I never said yeah Ali I never but I just got you know attached to the concept that religion is transmitted to through family. Uh, and then one day this the same friend you know a few years later maybe like seven to nine years later he, he sends me the ayah, uh, um, and they did not separate until after uh, the bayina had came to them. And um, Something is making noise. Uh, the microphone, is it your microphone is the only one? It is, it is. It's probably is my microphone. I got to get very sensitive. I think it is touching your beard. Your beard creating problem. Oh, how about now? <laughs> How about this? Is this better? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's creating static electricity around Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, I woke up this morning and and I think I gotta get a new one. So I'm gonna get a new headphones now. Hopefully Bluetooth. No, it is good. Fine. Okay, perfect. Um. So yeah, I um I I read this verse and it just hit me right away. It hit me and I'm just like, whoa, what's you know like this is different. I've never heard this concept before. Quran alone. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I freaked out a little bit. Like, what do you mean? And he sent me the the the. Um, the sites uh, quranislam.org and submission.org and um, I, I didn't care for submission.org I went to quranislam.org and um, I was always attached to mathematics so when I saw the miracle um, I, 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 I was like whoa like this is this is this blew my mind I actually got the tattoo right away after 19 um, <laughs> yeah Sorry, I lost you guys. Um, hello? Show us your yeah, tattoo. Yeah, we can hear you. I'm sorry. I, uh, okay. I muted myself. Show us your tattoo. Okay. Oh, um, it's 19. And then I got the, um, I got the, uh, the uh, what is this? The, the golden ratio and the, um, the Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm, hopefully, I'm gonna get some more that you know all is related to God. And um, yeah, after that, I, I, as soon as I saw this, I, I just you know fell in prostration and 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 just accepted everything that I was reading. Um, you know, when it came to the three prayers. Nice meeting you, Hamdi. Nice meeting you. For the too. tattoo, I have a little anecdote when I teach logic. Uh, symbolic logic and uh, we have uh, several chapters on uh, 19 rules of inference like modus ponens modus tollens hypothetic hypothetical syllogism it goes on 19 of them and then sometimes i say in classroom i, I when i test them on that i said i if i was i if i were brave I would tattoo them these rules on my chest and walk in the classroom <laughs> with my chest open. <laughs> Tell you about this. Uh, but you did. <laughs> That's okay. Please well, we'll get our next tattoos together. Yeah, don't go much, but uh, yeah, you pick with a little tattoo here, but don't go overboard. And you know what? I actually stopped myself. I was like, I'm not going to get any more after this because I'm getting really Mashallah. addicted to them. So yeah, okay. I, I stopped myself. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting and, you. And uh, we have a couple of more people. In fact, three people left. And I want to finish up. Ten minutes we have for three people. Hamid Merzai, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. 
uh, thank you so much, uh, given for this uh, joining this meeting. Uh, I was born in a Shia uh, in Afghanistan, Shia religion in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter in the Shirk Sim is always everywhere is Shirk Sim, like uh, the Shia. Uh, the Ismaili leader, Aga Khan, if you know the Aga Khan. Do you know the Aga Hans, right? Uh, yes, I have heard. Of yeah. Uh, he tell us always, uh, when you're doing worship, call Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Ali, do uh, call like that. When I read the Quran, when I found the Quran, Quran tell us uh, the most is only Allah. Do not call anyone with Allah. The Quran, the Quran tell us like that. Yani, uh, do not call anyone with Allah. But the the shirk is always the shirk religion is same everywhere. This doesn't matter for Afghanistan. Doesn't matter for another country. The shirk is is the same is always uh, everywhere. When uh, so when I come from Afghanistan to Turkey country, and uh, uh, I live. I lived in the Turkey country many years. I had an accident car. Um, and after accident car, I couldn't reading. I could uh, go to school. Uh, but I had a lot of time in the, my home. I had a, one uncle. He told me, uh, read the Quran. And when I, when I read the Quran, and I, uh, when I see the YouTube, I found it you, Adib. I found your uh, videos. Uh, I listen your videos. Uh, uh, when I research the Quran, when I read the Quran, when I research the specifically mathematics and the Quran, uh, 19th quotes I didn't buy. See, uh, I counted all of the. This is the all of Allah in the Quran many times. I counted without the computer. See. If you can see. Mashallah, this is your notes, your own study. Yeah, yeah, because because I had I, I didn't have any computer. I, I called without with without computer, all of things. What is it? From, wow. This is the Allah. This is handwriting. Yeah, yeah. This is my writing. Are you crazy? Show us. Yeah, show yeah. us. Hold on, hold on. This is crazy. Can you see? make it? Because this... when I when 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 I was in the Turkey country, I didn't not have any computer. That's why. Show us, show us a little bit close to the camera. This is your handwriting, correct? Yes. Let me show you. You are the... impressive. I love it. I am so impressed by you. Your your appreciation of the miracle, mashallah. That's exactly you did your research, mashallah. See, this all of them. Like this is my art. Wow. <laughs> okay. All of all of things about the 19 I researched and I counted without computer. When I see, I say, wow, what's this uh, impressive? And after that, um, uh, I we, we come from Turkey to United States. Uh, I come here and I'm working right now. I found you. Uh, you are my best friend. I did. Thank you so much. <laughs> You, you, you are such a wonderful example of an immigrant who comes here, who works hard. I, how old are you right now? I'm 25, almost 26 years old. And uh, how, uh, how old were you when you came to the United States? It's been like two years, that's it. We come from in 2019 in the United yeah, States. Yeah, oh, now you have your own business, correct? Uh, yeah, I had the uh, own business, but I lost it. But uh, I'm I'm trying to make another business. Doesn't matter. What are you doing? Tell us a little bit because I I love the way you are. You were telling me that you will do that, and you were going. To, you did that, and you succeeded, and you take care of your family. An immigrant yes. is just yesterday you came. Go ahead. Yes, um, uh, I, I I come. Uh, from uh, Turkey, from Sivas. I was living in Sivas uh, in uh, uh, Georgia, Atlanta. When I come to Georgia, Atlanta, you know, after a few months, uh, the Kuwait will be started. And after that, uh, I just moved with, uh, from Georgia, Atlanta to the New York City. Uh, and I started the, le the learning the job, the computer, uh, iPad, iPhone, phone repairs. I started uh, to learning this, that job. 
Uh, I'm doing apologize because my English is not very well. I just learned the English and job together last year. You That's know why. Turkish, you know Persian. English is third yeah. language. You yeah, are yeah, yeah. New skills and talents. You are uh, repairing uh, iPhones, correct? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I'm and doing. And you that. have uh, you have stands. What's called uh, carts, charts in malls. What's called? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we had. A, I, I, I just opened a small course and in, inside of malls. Uh, I lost. I lost because the the Kuwait. Uh, yeah. I can make a more customer that way. I, I just close it. I started the you work over here, but the same work, same job. Mashallah. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I I learned the English and the job together last year in New York. When I come from New York to here. I started my business and right now I bring my family from Georgia, Atlanta to here. Dior is still with me. I teach my bigger brother, my younger brother this job. I'm trying to teach my and most younger brother. He is 13 years old. And my father and my mother, uh, my my mother can write in reading, but I, I'm trying to teach her this job because this job Mashallah. is... <laughs> I believe you are it. impressive. I would love to Uh, talk to you especially about entrepreneurship because it has been a couple of years since you uh, you called me and you are also very courageous you have incredible self-confidence and uh, self-esteem you communicate so well i love it thank you very thank much you. nice meeting you thank you Please so much guys yes. thank you and we have uh, two more uh, people here one is wib from singapore and he doesn't want to show his face but uh, he wants to talk you are welcome uh, i don't know even how to pronounce your name my friend i don't know i call you friend i hope you are friend yeah hi Adip. we know each other for so long actually <laughs> yeah hi everybody salam to all And uh, thank you very much for making this uh, uh, opportunity for us to share a bit on uh, our story, yeah, towards monotheism. Um, yeah, I uh, started, I think, since I was uh, very, very uh, little kids now, actually. I'm very sensitive to God is one, you know. I still remember when I was, uh, I think, uh, five years old or six, my mother uh, been uh, bringing me to a market place, yeah, uh, where uh, over one side there is uh, this uh, um, uh, handiwork uh, people selling uh, this uh, uh, Quranic, you know, uh, like pictures and all that. And they have this uh, Allah now. At that time, this is uh, before seventies, yeah, before seventies, only Allah. And then uh, I uh, still remember when I was uh, just before seven, and then my mother bought again, you know, um, brought me to the market uh, to assist him, uh, assist her, sorry. And then I realized there's another one being created. That's Muhammad. At that time, I I I I cannot read Arabic, you know. I'm still very very small, but I was like um, surprised and startled. Like, why? I thought there's only one God, you know. What is the other one, you know? And I was scared at that time. Every time uh, after that, uh, when we uh, went to the market, I purposely told my mother, I don't want to use this lane, you know. Because I know they're selling this. <laughs> Just a bit of sharing, yeah. And then uh, after a while, you know, uh, this uh, Allah and Muhammad uh, picture uh, been everywhere in this uh, Southeast Asia, you know, in in the in the early 70s. And then um, I still remember when I was about what uh, eight eight. Eight or nine years old, um, my father bought very first time bought the Allah and Muhammad, you know, uh, this picture and hang on our our family hall, and um, for two weeks, 
after I got back from school, I don't want to enter through the main door, you know, <laughs> until, until my mother um, asked me why you don't want to, to join with us and all that. And then I straight away told her, why you hang that, that picture? <laughs> I thought there's only one God, you know. <laughs> and then uh, after that, they tried to uh, explain to me nicely and all that. Uh, and then I just ignore, you know. They asked me, just ignore. And then when I was 10, um, in the school, um, my um, the ustaz yeah, uh, told me, okay, um, this is the Your Quran. This is, yeah, this is uh, on the religious. We got one religious uh, subject now over here. Yeah, okay. This is a Quran. This is original from God. You know the others. Uh, his, historically claim to be uh, from, uh, let's say, from uh, the Nabi or whatnot. But there's no proof. That's all. He said to me, you know, mm -hmm. that was in early 70s. So at that time, when I was 10, I start to uh, uh, read the translation of the Quran, you know, try Very to understand. Age, mashallah. Yeah, try to understand what is he oh. actually trying to, to tell us, you know. I still remember I was frustrated that I cannot understand because... I've been um, uh, relating it to uh, the, the, the Islamic uh, society around my time, you know, and most of what they are doing is different. That's why I cannot understand, you know. There's a bit and pieces, you know. Uh, for me, it's very scientific, you know. Uh, one of it is um, that God has... Created like way in the sky or something like that, you know. For me, it's very, very, um, very scientific, you know. But in uh, actual, as a whole, I cannot understand, you know. But I've been trying and trying through my through my lifetime, yeah, you know? uh, trying to understand. And Alhamdulillah. But when I was forty eight years old. Then only I can, I, I start to realize if I just reset my mind, you know, to what uh, the, the surrounding uh, doing and just focus on the Quran, then only I can understand, you know. And then <clears throat> it starts to crawl in bit and bit and bit, you know. Like the uh, Surah Al-Imran uh, 3, 318, yeah. Saying uh, about uh, Allah, yeah, yeah, I try to understand that for four months now, just that verse now, you know, why Allah says that uh, only the angel and the people with knowledge will witness. say, yeah, will say the witness, you know, for four months, and then I, I found out uh, is in one of uh, the other verse, you know. Um, and it's crawl and crawl and crawl. Every time um, one thing been uh, uh, the, the, the meaning appear, and then another hundreds of other meanings starts to appear. Every time it's like that now. Uh, really, we um, finish in uh, one minute. I know it is very short time, but inshallah. In our future mm -hmm. meetings, we would love to hear more about your story, your ideas and transformation. Uh, mm -hmm. One minute, if you can summarize it, please. Yeah. So um, as a summary, I try to find what is the, the purpose of the Quran, you know. And then uh, one night, you know, I, I always have this uh, idea in the very early wee morning, 2 a.m. or something like that, I've been waking up. Um, that um, I like to share. The Quran is uh, uh, given to us so that we can create a civilization which is um, success and peaceful. That's all. And the rest is all the details, you know. That is one. And then uh, on the hadith and all that, I realized uh, when the Torah been uh, uh, given to us, 
and then the religious uh, people uh, create samud you know and samud is uh, the hadith of musa and then the angel came and then uh, they create uh, gospel gospel is say you know uh, it's a hadith also from uh, isa you know but uh, it's not been uh, approved by isa or musa and then come the quran and they create another one hadith you know but although the quran is uh, very uh, unique it's been protected um but for us uh, it's a blessing yeah we are in this uh, era where Masha we Allah. have the, the actual yeah that we can Masha refer Allah. to any time you know and yep. inshallah yeah as i uh, <laughs> like Do you to know share. uh uh, Qasim Ahmed from Malaysia. Have you heard heard about him? Yeah, yeah, I heard about him. Yeah, he Singapore is close to Malaysia, therefore, perhaps you know, I have uh, wrote introduction to his book. I'm top over there. Mashallah. <laughs> Inshallah, looking forward to see you here and uh, make sure cover your face. Uh, you may not <laughs> feel safe there. Uh, may God help you. And finally, yeah. we have Hassan Tashirek <laughs> from Turkey. Hassan. Uh, I don't know whether you were here or not. I told people don't torture commas and uh, dots and other exclamation mark. Here it is, this poor comma between letter K and T, T suffocated. I'm going to help the commas save it from that situation. Okay. Oh, mashallah, Mrahil, your son. Okay, it is your turn right now, uh, Brother Hassan. How old are you? I'm 15 years old. Mashallah, you are 15, brave young man from Turkey. City from Turkey? Where are you from? Uh, I am from Afyon. Afyon, okay, tell us about yourself. You are too young for this conversation, but... Uh, unfortunately, in Turkey, very early age, people are indoctrinated in Sunni religion. In fact, leave children alone, clergymen, imams, papas, or uh, reverends, or rabbis, leave children alone. I really, I am against teaching children religion in elementary, middle, high school. Let them learn about religion when they become adults in college. Let them learn philosophy, critical thinking, sciences, God science in the world universe. But unfortunately, in a very young age, they are just telling Ibn Felan, Abu Felan, this story, that story. That's unbelievable. Go ahead, Hassan. Yes. I'm proud of you that you are free man right now. When I was young, uh, I'm still young, but <laughs> <laughs> four Love or it. five years old. <laughs> I'm going to the mosque regularly. I read Quran, but in Arabic. I don't know what's my religion. My imams tell something about uh, other things, uh, many, many stories. I don't know what they said. If, because I'm a child, elementary school, I learned religion say uh, a religion lesson lesson but it was boring uh, in high school i came when i came high school i came across a different teacher tell about quran i never heard like this conversations she told she told me like Quran, what's Quran? How can I read Quran? I shocked. My life changed. I searching the religion, what's my religion, what's other religions. I read so many times Quran, its uh, translations, English, Turkish, and my English is uh, Mm, not <laughs> it's elementary. It's not that good, correct? You mean yeah. 
Yes. But your English is much better than many college educated Turkish people because in Turkey, language education is worst. I studied yes. in Middle East Technical University. Supposedly, English is the language of the education in Bosphorus University. When I came to the United States, yes, I could read, understand the, word, the language, and I knew the grammar, but I couldn't put three words together, talk. And you are doing very well, mashallah, very nice. Thank you and very Osman, much. And Osman, you, you sometimes you look frowned as if you are angry with someone. Come on. No, just... I'm not angry. I, okay. My <laughs> wife my wife says he, you have detox. <laughs> <laughs> no. Perhaps you are trying to squint your eyes to see something, and then your eyebrows become like this. And I say, is, is he angry no. with someone? Yeah, I, I know that's the, the deficiency <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No. Okay. And uh, we have Mirahil San and uh, Hassan will come back to you for last uh, two minutes. And Mirahil, uh, what is your son's name? Let him talk for a few words. Say salam. What's your name? Oh. So my name is Mikhail. <laughs> Mikhail. Mikhail, yeah. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Nice to see you. And what is your, uh, do you have brothers and sisters or you are alone? He has a little sister. Hi. What is her name? Eliyin. Eliyin. Look at him. He gives the name Mikhail and Eliyin. Eliyin means high places. Mashallah. Um, beautiful. It is Eliyin is in fact is description of the numerical code that it yeah. those yeah. who witness the numerical code yeah. the abroad <laughs> the good good people they go up they excel mashallah beautiful word ed hassan it is your turn uh, i learned so much things uh, for my religion for my family i read quran for so many times and something it changed my mind why every imam says allah and muhammad 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 i don't understand i start to read hadith hadith books and something's really bad really bad things written and tell us I go to the mosque and ask the imam these questions and my other teachers and other imams, other mosques, and every teacher answers my question differently. Mm, something has been wrong. I can feel it. Uh, I start to learn Arabic, other languages. I look these books and I finally uh, came to the conclusion decided yes Marshall. my brain is start working I start to pray the last day of Ramazan uh, the last day of Ramazan my mother shocking. They don't tell us something about religion. My parents don't know about these things. My father goes to mosque every Juma, but I don't know where he go. He don't know where he go. Why he go to the mosque? <laughs> I ask him why you go. Why you are going to mosque? And he cannot answer it. I Hassan, to... Hassan, I want to stop you here because I think your story is beautiful. Next time, please don't forget, join us. Your English is beautiful. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. Imagine English is your second Thank language. You. Meanwhile, you are learning Arabic at age 15. You are tortured by religion, and here you are at this age, you are subjected to many difficult issues, theological issues, 
and that many alims, ulamas, those professional people, they cannot make any sense out of it. You are trying to make sense out of it at this age, yeah. mashallah. Bro. I'm so proud of you. And uh, Allah, yeah. if you want to finalize in a few seconds, everyone have 15 second chance as a closing uh, statement. I would uh, love it because it took really longer than I expected. I was expecting one hour, but I thought it could not. One hour, 30 minutes, now 146. Go ahead, just 15 seconds, finish it, and everyone has 15 seconds. Hassan, it is yours. 15 seconds. Closing Next argument. Time. Me? I Hassan, just want me? to say, Hassan. we want more read. We want more think. We want to want, we want to more love each other. Thank you very Mash much. Bro. MashaAllah. Looking forward to see you next time. Hassan Uzbal, 15 seconds yours, and then we'll go in order here. I thank God for um, blessing me, being surrounded by people who have received his letter in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. So I'm, I thank you for the blessing and uh, love being surrounded by people who worship God alone. Thank you. It has been joy knowing you, my brother from Australia. Mashallah. And brother Mrahil, go ahead. 15 seconds. It could be 19 okay. seconds, Max. <laughs> Blind belief is not the same as verified acknowledgement. So, you know, we have to keep going and try to investigate for ourselves. That's the big, one of the biggest messages in the Quran in 1736. Mashallah. And uh, Osman Yashar. Well, I am I'm, I'm so happy that I attended this meeting and I loved uh, learning about your stories. I wish you all well and see you again soon. Inshallah. Inshallah. And Hamid Marzai. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Uh, don't believe anything without research. That's it. Thank you Mashallah. so much. Without yeah. questioning, without researching for yourself. Yeah. It is uh, chapter seven, uh, 17, verse 36, correct? Yes. Mashallah. Uh, Hamdi Bazian. Um, I've been in the Quran alone since 2017, and I just came up on this app, um, Clubhouse, where I've met everybody. And subhanAllah, like I feel like my journey just actually restarted. I've been investing so much time in the Quran and, and, and learning a lot of different things. So I'm really happy to have met everybody and have uh, introduced me to Adib, and uh, I'm really looking forward to being along with you guys. Mashallah, the microphone needs to stay away from your face because when it touches the, <laughs> the hair, each hair makes a noise. It says, I am here. I am I'm, I'm going to get a new one. I'm going to get a new one soon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Celine. Assalamu alaikum. And I just want to thank all of you for... Um, you know, allowing me to be here. Thank you, Brother Adib. Um, alhamdulillah, I just want to remind everybody, trust Allah, trust him on this process to understanding his book and stick close, hold on to his rope and don't let any other ropes drop in front of you. Hold on to Allah's. <laughs> alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Uh, says, uh, the Quran says, uh, oh, people of the book, let's come to one word that is common between us. It is God. Let's not make each other lords, humans, lords from humans, from messengers, from prophets, from religious men, from politicians. Let's be equal. It is, that is the message. Mashallah. Nice meeting you. And uh, Wib from Singapore, do you have uh, last a few words, closing words? Yeah, thank you, brother Adip. Of course, um... Again, uh, my understanding, Islam means il salam. It's from salam, you know. That means the peace, you know. And to say a Muslim means the people that promotes peace. Mashallah. So here we are. I hope uh, we are going to the good direction. And inshallah, yeah, uh, we hope that uh, all people will embrace peace and success to all their generation to go. Thank you very much. MashaAllah. 
And I hope is Lilia is hearing us. Uh, she's the last person who will make the last statement. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, to the God who opened my heart to the truth <clears throat> and um, showed me this miracle of 19. Uh, I'm such a big, big fan of Code 19. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and thank you for having me today. Wow, uh, this, that has been a beautiful exchange of our experiences. I'm so happy to have you here. Inshallah, you will be kind to people around you, appreciate every blessing and the biggest blessing in my life. And it is yours to know there is a God, a creator of your universe and he's Rahman and Rahim. He's loving God, caring God. And there will be the day of judgment and hopefully we return to our God. And uh, inshallah, uh, we'll meet you again next week, Saturday at 19 p.m.